they start from a side and they didn't want no small drop. First of all, acyl CoA dehydrogenase, the oxidizer, turns so into enoid CoA. Then it was enoid CoA hydrogenase, it hydrolyzes chromium. It's called acyl sorry, please, so sorry for her. It hydrolyzes the other turns into 3 hydroxy acyl CoA. Now, Bosman 3 hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase. He didn't stick. He came up with a full force to break up 3 hydroxy acyl CoA into beta keto acyl CoA. Last but not least, beta keto acyl CoA finally had his way with her. She had some of her cells, but she became mostly what she greatly detested acetyl CoA. So, did you know these guys were friends? Yes, they were friends. They conspired and desired and found a way to take away my energy. But they could have done without CoA, who had no problem with it because of the byproducts. The byproducts, NADH and FADH, yeah. Oh, and loads and loads of ATP. ATP is a good thing for you. <laughs> now, Alpha's muscles are pumping and they are pumping so much harder just to prove a point. Okay, so next we want to teach you how to have a proper nutritious diet that will help you to be able to understand what food groups will help you to build more muscles that you can reach the goal that you want to reach. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Wake up, wake up, gotta build those muscles, gotta shape up. Want to eat right so you can tone up Look buff like wrestler pro John Cena You wanna show up If he had it his way He'd eat oil dung and cheesecake Some deep fried chicken, fat trim pork And loads and loads of sweets Hey What we are trying to say If you want to get fit, that's not the road to take. Here's all that we sing all about the diet that you should take. The role that see makes in this place. that you consume would raise your blood, glu blood glucose levels. Particularly, these foods are from the carbohydrate food group. So foods that have a, a number of 55 and under are the best foods to eat because they have a low glycemic number in the index. Basically, this shows that they are slowly digested and assimilated into the body and therefore there's a gradual increase in the blood glucose levels. Foods that are 70 and under, those are of a medium size scale. Therefore those foods are, are appropriate as well to eat. But foods that are 70 and up, 70 to 100, those are the kind of foods that you should stay away from. Because those foods are readily assimilated and would therefore make your blood glucose levels rise to an exceedingly high rate because they are readily broken down and transported and assimilated into the blood. So when your blood glucose levels are high, the excess glucose converts, is converted into fat. This can be seen in this diagram here, which I'm going to explain. So when your glucose levels are high, there's a high energy charge that, it, that circulates within the body and hence the cells have a high energy charge and that high energy charge inhibits the TCA cycle which is depicted here. Alright, so you consume, consume your food, the blood glucose levels rise really rapidly and now the body is taking action to try and, you know, let the blood glucose levels decrease. However, as the glucose goes into glycolysis, and from glycolysis, when pyruvate is formed, the TCA, TCA cycle starts to happen. When there's too much glucose, as I said, and high energy charge, it inhibits the TCA cycle. And this is where fatty acid synthesis occurs. So from here, the acetyl-CoA 
due to the amount of acetyl-CoA that is produced, it exceeds the energy requirements of the cell. So the acetyl-CoA therefore is in excess, which would combine with the oxaloacetate to form citrate. The citrate now would need the mitochondria depicted by this square box here, and the citrate is now outside of the mitochondria there. From here, the citrate is going to go back to oxaloacetate, and while it does that, CoA combines with the carbons that are going to be taken off of the citrate, that citrate is a six carbon molecule, and form acetyl CoA. Now, when acetyl CoA is formed, this is where fatty acid synthesis occurs. Acetyl CoA first has to be converted to malonyl CoA, which is the committed step. Malonyl CoA now is going to be formed by the enzyme acetyl CoA carboxylase, which is an ABC enzyme, meaning that it needs ATP, its cofactor is biotin, and carbon dioxide is going to be produced. If the ACC enzyme acetyl CoA carboxylase is a bifunctional enzyme, and they are going to have, then there's going to be two catalytic sites biotin carboxylase and trans carboxylase. With the biotin carboxylase, carbon dioxide is going to combine with the biotin carboxylase. This is where ATP, the A, and the ABC that I just mentioned, this is where ATP is going to be consumed. From here now, when ATP is consumed and the carbon dioxide binds to biotin, it's going to swing across the trans carboxylase. And here, the CO2 binds the acetyl CoA and malonyl is formed. So that's how we get the malonyl CoA. From malonyl CoA, here we have the enzyme fatty acid synthase. that's going to be utilized. Now the fatty acid synthase enzyme is a multi is a multi-catalytic enzyme as it has seven different enzymatic activities. The basic thing to know with fatty acid synthase, which is converting the malonyl CoA committed step to fatty acyl CoA, is that there are four reactions. A condensation reaction, one, a reduction reaction, two, a hydration reaction, and another reduction reaction. In fatty acid synthesis, in both the reduction reactions, step two and step four, NADPH is consumed. And in the third reaction, the hydration reaction, H2O is released. When this occurs, fatty acid CoA is produced, Another reaction occurs where CoA is released and here you have fatty acids. Now the part that I didn't mention as yet is that when fructose 1,6-bisphosphate in glucose is going to be converted to pyruvate, with a, there's another series of steps that are going to take place, DHAP is going to be formed. From DHAP, there's a reversible reaction that occurs where glycerol 3 phosphate is formed. Now, a fatty acid consists of glycerol and three fatty acids attached. So, hence, as we have the glycerol present in the glycerol 3 phosphate and fatty acids formed from the acetyl CoA going straight up to fatty acid CoA and then fatty acids. That's how you're going to get to try acid this Cena, you want to show up. If he had it his way, he'd eat oil dung and cheesecake, some deep fried chicken, fat shrimp, pork, and loads and loads of sweets. Hey, what we are trying to say. If you want to get fit, that's not the road to take. Here's how the we sing all about 
the time that you should take the road I see next in this place This is a story all about how Elalu and Bao can help you out And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there I'll tell you all you need to know about BCAAs In the skeletal muscle oxidation takes place of these amino acids via BCKDH. Hair colored derivatives are seen where in the Krebs cycle produces ATP. But if you keep this up, your muscles won't grow. You'll have nothing left but your skinny bones. Now don't you worry and don't be scared. If you want to stay lean and take BCAAs. BCAA provides nitrogen for alanine synthesis, which then goes through gluconeogenesis, the glucose is sent back to the muscle to produce ATP, and the cycle continues. When you exercise, CPK and LDH are associated with muscle damage. Isoleucine reduces these levels, which means you can work out longer and harder. Now, uh, tryptophan produces serotonin, which tells the brain that your body is tired. This reduces muscle strength and endurance, but failing competes with it to lower your exhaustion. Leucine increases protein synthesis by the PI3K and the mental pathway. The PI3K regulates glucose uptake through GLUT4 translocation. Leucine activates the mTOR signaling pathway, which enhances protein synthesis and muscle mass for your gain. Now that's all you need to know about BCAA, it's time to go work out and get your muscles in shape. Look at your muscles, soon they will appear once you use those BCAAs.